Hi everyone and welcome to this video of the overview of each pantheon in Hands of the Gods. So I want to do this video mainly because there's still a lot of new players that are coming into the game. And you know, since most of, if it's not all of the pantheons I think that will be in the game are out, I think it's the perfect time to do a video like this. So basically I'm going to talk a little bit of what are the teams around each pantheon and what are the leaders and what they do inside of them. So. First off, we have a Chinese with the leader is Nuwa, and her ability is to add a Crescent Blade to your hand and you reduce its cost by one until the end of the turn. And basically, Crescent Blade is a one mana right here uh, spell that deals one damage to a unit. So the Chinese are really centered um, with some beast synergy throughout their, their deck with like Manifold Blade, which gains damage for each beast you have. And other stuff, they also are spell heavy, so they really combo well with cards that have spell, like one of their legendary cards, Guan Yu. And whenever you play a spell, you deal one damage to all enemy units. And they really revolve around uh, being powerful with spells. That's for the Chinese pantheon. Then we move to the Egyptian pantheon with Ra. Ra is actually... His pantheon is really with healing, he has like meditation, his leader ability is to restore one health to all friendly in a target column. So you can already see that synergy and then you have like Sobek, whenever something is healed he gains plus one plus one. It's a two drop but can grow really really high then. It's also a pantheon where there's a lot of removal with Magnus Slams, they have also the best whiteboard in the game being the Annihilation that deals four damage to all enemies. And there's also a little bit of revival with like Book of the Dead that spawns three random gods uh, from the graveyards into your control. And they have also, you know, as ex execute is a good removal also. And yeah, decent removal. Um, they're also considered like one of the most late game pantheon, but they can still also have a strong mid game. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about the Egyptian. So healing, uh, kind of like a lot of removal, and um, yeah, uh, a little bit of the revival, like with Scarab Blessing also, that it resurrects when a unit dies, and you also have like Ritual Tribute, spawning gods from the graveyard. Anyways, these three teams are a little bit what consist of uh, Egyptian. And we move into Greek. Now Greek right now, it's leader is Zeus, and his ability is to give a friendly god plus one plus one. So this really revolves around boosting your gods or uh, anything, it will be good with some minions that trigger whenever you play a god, like the marksman that gains attack or the brute that gains plus one plus one. Um, so anything like that, there's really a lot of god in this pantheon to trigger it. You can make a on god only deck and then you have some cards that, like Dive Avengers that deal dam 4 damage to all units that are not gods. So you can see here, you see these side kill an enemy god, they're really revolt about the god themes and, you know, that's uh, that's the Greek pantheon, basically. And we have Hindu, who are supposed to be the most control-oriented pantheon, but they're also the newest, so they, I expect more cards to be coming for them. Um, and their leader is Ganesha, and basically you deploy a Pillar of Light, which is a 0-1 construct that cannot move or attack, and it heals a random friendly at the start of your turn. Now I'm gonna say this is like healing, like raw, um, but like or Egyptian pantheon, but that's not true. Um, what makes this pantheon unique is not the healing, because that's probably the only thing that heals in the pantheon if I'm not wrong. But it's the thing, there's a lot of pillars, and that's the thing, the st structures with no attack that, that does thing. Pillar of Fortitude, Pillar of Exile, and Pillar of Parathy. You can see there's a lot of pillars in this pantheon. And not only that, they also have the keyword Reincarnate, which is basically when the card would go to your graveyard, it goes back to your hands instead. So there's a lot of value when a card has Reincarnate. For example, Bakasura is a 3 mana 3-3. Three, three, and when reincarnates, he gains the ability to attack and, and now ignores immunity and protects. So not only he goes back to your hand so you can play a second time, but it's boosted. There's a lot of cards like that. Um, like here, Flourish, 3 mana, you give a plus 1, plus 1 to a unit. And it comes back to you and then you can replay it to give plus 2, plus 2. Um, basically. So that's... That's really, they're really trying to push control hard with the Hindu Pantheon right now. And it's the new OS also. So 
So you have a bench of that, and you can see there's a little bit of S cards in the other pantheons. Or right, moving with Mayan, uh, we have there Apuash is the leader, and you basically deploy a zombie anywhere on the battlefield. And it's important to note that zombies can only move one tile, that it's right, right there. So they really revolve around the zombie theme and around death, like overhaul the thematic of the pantheon. Um, this kills your unit and gives you two cards from your graveyard, for example. This, whenever one of your unit dies, Hunbats gains attack. Um, here you sacrifice one of your unit to one of your random uh, unit to kill a random unit on the enemy side of the board. Um, they also have like this. This is really powerful, giving all your zombie plus three plus three. And basically, uh, this turns uh, one enemy into a zombie. This deals three damage to everything. And if you kill something, you leave the zombie behind. And like whenever one of your friendly characters dies, this deals damage to random enemy, and they displace them randomly around the map. So that's a little bit about the theme of the Mayan pantheon. Really revolve about zombies and dying to trigger stuff. So then we're with Norse. Norse, it's Odin. The the Godfather or the All Father, the All Father Odin, um, which basically spawns you a one one curse warrior that has charge, um, charge meaning that whenever it enters the battlefield, it can move and attack immediately. So it's really really aggro style of play. You're gonna see a lot of cards that are cheap, the two zero cards, bunch of one, a bunch of two. Even there, there's like so many cards that are cheap in the Pantheon. This is really like the rush deck. They can also play mid range. Like the highest cost is six. They only have one. Like they cap like like four cards at five. You can see it's really really aggressive. Lots of early cards, and that's the ability also that. So you basically you can swarm the board, or you can go with a more mid range approach with this deck. Or there's some funny combo also you can do with some minions. Um, like, uh, you know, you, whenever one of your unit dies, it deals one damage to their summoning stone, which are the objective of the, of the game. Uh, or whenever one of your unit dies, you can spawn some, uh, some minions, so zombies with some of the minions, like, um, where is it? Uh, this island scout here. So yeah, basically that's the point of Norse to be really aggressive. Then we're going to have Roman. Uh, which Bellona were at here that his leader ability is to move a unit to two to up to two tiles away. Um, so just like blinking their units on the battlefield, and this is like Bellona Roman Pantheon really revolve around uh, positioning. They're like they like formation, you know, like Romans do when they go at the war. So you have like really a lot of cards to just move your enemy throughout the battlefield. You can stun them if they move for zero, swap position of two units. Um, you know, they are really like mid rangey and a little bit of control. They can also be like like um, aggressive if you want, like shackles where you select two adjacent enemy and if they split, they both take three damage. And then you can make you split with your leader ability that blinks them up. Each time one of your opponent move, that your creature that you give tenacity on gains plus one plus one. Um, you know, there's a bunch of examples like that. Bludgeon, you deal 4 damage to a, a column, but, you know, you can blink one of their units into an, uh, adjacent to another unit, so the, he has, like, 3 units in a column, and then you bludgeon. Um, dishonorable, meaning that if deals 4 damage to all enemies who are not adjacent to another enemy, meaning that, you know, if, if your opponent don't have their unit together, they will be dealt 4 damage, and then you can combine it with your blink to make them, um fall apart. Hercules who basically uh, pulls the unit to him um, and deals one damage. Uh, you know, it's really, really moving their, their their units a lot and one of the best legendaries in the game. Whenever an enemy unit moves, it takes one damage, but you can make them move with so many of your cards, they can, even if they don't move, you can force them to move and take free damage. So, this Pantheon really goes with, like, controlling movement of your opponent and, and like, Take advantage of bad positioning from their part and have good position with your your units. And, you know, you can always take advantage of that moving to blinking units. Uh, 
two tiles. So this is going to be all the seven pantheons that are right now. And there's also the minions, but the minions are really, really versatile. They can go in all the pantheons, and there are some that are better with some pantheon, like, you know, uh, Marksman, whenever friendly gods enter the battlefield, gains plus one attack. This goes, will be better probably with Greek, who has a lot of gods. Um, then you have White Tiger, which is gain health and is a beast. It's probably going to be useful in Chinese more. Um, and you have uh, cards like Imperial Guard. Whenever you play a spell, it gains plus one attack and takes no return damage. This is really, really good in Chinese since they cannot have a free spell with their leader ability. And yeah, it really range out for, like, depending on the unit that and their power, you can really see them play more in a Pantheon or the other. So, I guess that... That could help you if you're starting in the game. Decide a little bit what pantheons um, you want to play, and also if you're choosing a pantheon to do one of your requests, what your you what are the strength of the pantheon? Try to build in that strength and to take units for that, since that's generally what their pantheon are, are good at. So I hope that you really enjoyed, guys. I hope that you learned a lot. Um, feel free to uh, you know like, comment, and subscribe. If there's anything I miss, just tell me in the comment section. Uh, really appreciate all of your support. Honestly, we're getting uh, really close to a thousand subscribers. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.